What is vibe coding? It is a new coding practice in which you basically don't write any code. You let AI code for you completely. And before you throw up your hands and say that's ridiculous, Andre Karpathy, the leading mind in artificial intelligence, just posted about it and says he loves it. Let me show you what it is and then we're going to test it out. And I'm going to make a simple project and a much more complicated project where we build the game Tetris, iterate and add features, and then build an entire machine learning framework to have AI play Tetris. And I do it all without writing a single line of code. Watch how cool this is. So here's Andre Karpathy's post. 3.8 million views, so it seems like people agree. There's a new kind of coding I call vibe coding, where you fully give in to the vibes, embrace exponentials, and forget that the code even exists. It's possible because the LLMs, Cursor Composer with Sonnet, are getting too good. Also, I just talked to Composer with Super Whisper, so I barely even touch the keyboard. I ask for the dumbest things, like decrease the padding on the sidebar by half because I'm too lazy to find it. I always accept all. I don't read the diff. When I get error messages, I just copy paste them in with no comment. Usually that fixes it. The code grows beyond my usual comprehension. I'd have to really read through it for a while. Sometimes the LLMs can't fix a bug, so I just work around it and ask for random changes until it goes away. It's not too bad for throwaway weekend projects. Still quite amusing. All right, we're going to test it out. Today, I have a slightly different stack. We're gonna be using Windsurf instead of Cursor, and I'm gonna be using Super Whisper, just like Andre Karpathy. Now, for those of you not familiar, Super Whisper is a speech-to-text AI tool that works incredibly well. All right, so let's test it out. We're gonna be using O3 Mini with medium reasoning. And so here we go. I'm gonna open up Super Whisper, and we're gonna get started. Build me a login authentication page. Okay, there it is. Build me a login authentication page. Let's hit enter. Okay, so it's generating. All right, so that was really fast. I'll create a small Flask project that includes a login authentication page. Here's what I'll set up. Okay, good. Read me app.py, all good. Now I'll create those files for you. So they should be created. Okay, please create it. So get repositories found in the parent folder of the workspace. Here we go. So would you like to open the repositories? Yes. Then do you want to install the recommended Python extension? Sure. Let's go ahead and do that. This is the first time I'm using Windsurf, which is why I have to do this. I'm going to accept all changes, not even think about it. Look at all that code that was already written. All right, now let's just ask it to spin up a server. Let's see if it can even do that. Spin up a server to get this app running. All right, open the terminal, so it's telling me to do that. So let's do this, CD, boom, set a VNV, activate it, great. We're gonna install the requirements, fine. This is all just copy paste, I'm not even thinking at all. There we go. All right, so we ran into our first issue. So I'm literally just gonna copy it, put it into here, and hit enter. Okay, one file needs review, I'm not even gonna review it. Accept all. All right, so I'm simply going to install the requirements again. Just do exactly what it says. And app.py, and there we go, it worked. Okay, now we're going to open up, there it is. So we have a username and password login page. But let's not stop there, let's keep going. Now add Google authentication to this page. And this is kind of nice with Cascade, with Windsurf, you can actually make changes to the entire project instead of just one file at a time, which is a, a little bit different than Cursor. Okay, so we got an error, but it's not done editing, so I'm just gonna wait, okay? Not even gonna look at the diff, not gonna look at the changes, we're just going to look at the results and see if it worked. Okay, to complete your setup, update your dependencies by adding Flask, great. All right, so I opened up the folder and it restarted Windsurf. So I'm kind of in this weird state where changes were made, but not all of them. Let's just see what happens and I'll have it fix it for us. All right, no module found, Flask. All right, so I'm simply gonna copy paste the error. I already know what it is. I'm not in the right Conda environment, but let's see if it tells me how to do it correctly. No, it didn't, okay. So I'm just gonna activate the VN right here. We're back in there. Now, Python app.py, and I don't have this Flask dance. Okay, so it looks like I still have the same issue. Copy paste. Of course, Python environment management is the thing that trips me up here. Of course it is. All right, so let's install Flask dance. Done. 
Let's try to run it again. Again, very little thinking, just kind of copy pasting, looking over it and we got it going. Okay, let's head back here, refresh the page and it does not have the Google button yet. Thanks to the sponsor of this segment, Langtrace. They have been awesome partners to us, so excited to tell you about them again today. Langtrace is a leading AI software development consulting company that builds AI products to propel your business forward. Those products include an open source and open telemetry based observability and evaluations platform that helps you evaluate and improve your LLM usage in your application. It's trusted by thousands of developers from early stage companies all the way up to Fortune 500 companies. Langtrace helps developers collect and analyze analyze traces, collect data sets, and run evaluations, resulting in highly reliable and secure AI systems. Again, Langtrace is open source and open telemetry and plugs in easily with OpenAI, Mistral, DeepSeek, Gemini, Weaviate, Pinecone, and more. Langtrace offers end-to-end -end observability, tracing everything from LLMs to vector databases, and framework-level calls like Crew AI, Llama Index, DSPy, and Langchain. With native support for Crew AI, which you know I love, Langtrace provides a custom-built dashboard to track Crew AI sessions, agents, tasks, tools, and memory. Track everything your agents are doing. So go from shiny demos to reliable AI products easily with Langtrace. Check out Langtrace. It is open source. And if you want to use their hosted version, you can get 20% off right now if you use the link in my description. And if you want to learn more, join one of their coming webinars where they go over everything. So check them out. They've been a great partner. Go star their GitHub. And thanks again to Langtrace. Now back to the video. All right, so I'm just going to tell it. I don't see the Google authentication button, although the code is there. Hit enter. So by the way, if you've never coded before, you can do this. This is easy. All right, so let's walk through a few possibilities. Confirm that the Google Blueprint is properly registered in your application. How do I properly register Google Blueprint? Do it for me. Okay, let's see if it's actually able to do this. Okay, so it did add a bunch of code. And of course, I'm just gonna accept all. Okay, so it says that I should see the login slash Google endpoint, which if I enter it there, I do, okay? Uh, but I don't see the button. All right, so I'm definitely doing something wrong here, but I'm trying not to think too much about it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take a screenshot. Okay, so this model does not support images. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna switch the model. So we're gonna switch to Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. I'm gonna say, I don't see the Google Auth button on this page. Please add it here. And I guess I should have just spoken that, but that's okay. Ah, I see the issue. You're using a template for the login page. Let me check the template, great. So now we're using a different model. Maybe this model is gonna be better. Okay, it definitely feels a little bit slower. I'm just gonna accept all and there it is. Okay, so it doesn't look great. A little broken image there, but fine, that's good enough. All right, so next we're going to have it write the game Tetris and then we're going to try to get it to use some machine learning to play it itself. Let's see if we could do that. Build me the game Tetris in Python. All right, suggested background terminal command. Yes, go ahead and accept. Okay, so we're gonna accept all. There we go. And yeah, there's a lot of code in there. Let's go ahead and run it. What do I have to do to run this code? All right, so let's do this. We're gonna CD into it. We're gonna activate the VNV. We're going to install all of the requirements and then we're going to spin up the file. I didn't really think about that. I just copy pasted. All right, press any key to play. There we go. Okay, so good, pretty good. Let's just make sure it works properly and it should disappear line. Good, okay. So let's stop there. Now there's a couple things I wanna add to it. Make sure there's a preview window where we can see the next piece that is coming. And that's all I have to do. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it is writing the files. I'm just gonna accept all. Not gonna do anything except for run it again and see if it worked. Okay, so I do not see a next piece preview area. So that's okay, let's quit. I tried it again. I don't see a next piece preview area. Please fix it. 
And so I might have to try like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet instead. I think that's the gold standard of coding assistance or coding models. But let's see if we can get this to work. Okay, so definitely increase the screen width. That's good to see. I shouldn't even be looking at the diff to be fair for true vibe coding, but that's okay. I took a peek. All right, I'm just going to accept all. We're going to play it and see what happens. All right, there's the next shape. Look at that, so cool. Amazing, amazing. And it added a score too, which I didn't ask for, but great. Let's just make sure it works again. When I get rid of this line, I should have a score of 10. Okay, score of 10, fine, good. Now add a pause and end game button. I'll accept all. Let's go ahead and run it again. Press any key to play. Oh, and the pause and end game buttons are in weird places. All right, so let's just say that and get it fixed. The pause and end game buttons appear right in the middle of the screen over the Tetris game. Move them all the way to the left. All right, accept all, and let's play. Perfect, and let's just make sure the pause game works and the end game. Okay, so it doesn't work. Let's see, it pauses but does not do anything after that. Let's get that fixed. Pausing the game works, but you can't unpause it. Please add that and also make sure end game works at any time. Okay, for some reason it didn't actually make the changes. Let's ask it to do that. All right, please make these changes. Okay, for some reason it's not actually making the changes itself. That's okay, we'll do that ourselves. Okay, so I'm gonna copy the code. Kind of weird that it's making me do this. I'm gonna find the pause game and I'm going to replace it with the code that I have now. Okay. All right, then I'm gonna update this part of the code right here and let's just indent it properly. And I think that should be good. Let's save it. Again, very weird I had to do that manually, but that's okay. And there we go. Let's pause the game and unpause end game. Perfect. Okay, that's amazing. All right, now I want to allow AI to learn how to play this game. Let's see if we're able to do that. Okay, that all works. Now I want to allow AI to learn how to play this game and play it itself. Now I have no idea how it's going to implement this, so let's see. So I've added a basic AI agent mode, has a placeholder for future learning, and picks random moves. Okay, AI mode, great. But did it actually add anything? You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna switch over to Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. Maybe I'm gonna have a little bit better luck and maybe I won't have to tell it to make the changes each time. It seems repetitive and unnecessary. Okay, that all works. Now I wanna allow AI to learn to play this game, Tetris, and play itself. Okay, so it's gonna use a popular library called Stable Baselines 3, great. So it seems like Cloud 3.5 Sonnet still might be the gold standard for AI coders. So look at this, implement DQN, Deep Q Network Agent using Stable Baselines 3. Add training and evaluation code. This is so cool. Lots of code being written here. So do I want to do that? Accept, okay, so it's running. Installing right from here. I didn't even have to do this in terminal, great. I'm gonna accept all. Would you like me to start the training process for you? Yes. All right, there it goes. Let's see what happens. Python train AI.py. Do you want to run this command? Accept. Let's see what happens. So it is running in the background. And where do I actually see? Here we go. Okay, so there is an issue. So I'm going to copy that, paste it into here, and see if it can fix it. We need to import shapes from the main file. Let me fix it. Great. And go ahead and run it again. All right, so still an issue. All right, so I'm going to accept all. I'm gonna copy the issue. I'm gonna paste it in again and hit enter. Shape mismatch and how we're encoding the piece information. Great, fix it up for me. Okay, here we go. Accept, let's try it again. And oh, there we go. Look at that. It is actually running. We're getting some messages between. Oh yeah, here we go, rewards. Oh my God, this is so cool. Okay, when is it going to end? So I'm gonna accept all, just to make sure all the changes are accepted and in the code, and it seems like it's still running. So I don't know how long this is gonna take. How long will the training take? It's running right now. So even as it's running, I can still continue to work with Windsurf. 
So the AI completed about 151,000 time steps out of a million. So 15% complete. Great. Okay. So it should take approximately four and a half minutes. Let me just cut ahead and show you that. All right, here we go. Game over. Total reward, negative 18.89. Great. Seems like it's done. How do I get it to play now? All right, so let me modify the main game to include an AI player mode. Accept all. Oh, here we go. Okay, we got an issue. So I'm going to go ahead and paste it in. Circular import issue. All right, great. Fix it up for me. So suggested background. I don't want to run that. I'm going to accept all. And then I'm going to just run it manually. Here we go. Looks like it might work. Press any key to play. Oh, okay. We did run into another issue. The game started, but then quit with this error. And then I'm going to paste in the error and let it fix it. I don't want it to do that. I'm going to accept all the changes. I'm going to run it myself. And let's see. Okay, so it doesn't look like the AI is actually playing the game. So I'm going to end the game. Okay, the game spins up now, but AI isn't playing it. How do I get it to play? Oh no, I did train it. Okay, so it's telling me I need to train it again. No, I did train it. There should be a training file already. All right, so it's checking. Maybe it didn't save it. Okay, there it is. Yes, it did. Let me fix that. That's really cool that I can actually look through the file structure and find the file I need. Now try running the game again and press A to watch the AI play. So I'm gonna reject, I'm gonna accept all, open it up, I'm gonna push a, and there it goes. Look at that. That's AI playing. It's not that good, but it's definitely playing it. You lost. Okay. Very weird. I can probably make some more progress on this, but for now, I'm just going to leave it here. That's what vibe coding is all about. I think this is amazing. I didn't write a single line of code here, and still I was able to get the game Tetris working, get an AI trained up with basically very little experience doing any of this. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.